Hello and welcome to another episode of Oh, it's that telecommunications stuff that uh, Sam managed to get into randomly about nine months ago and now he's ended up with just a ridiculous amount of stuff. Yes, that's right. Well, today we're going to be looking at these things right in front of us. These are diverticles. Ooh, what they are, uh, well, they divert a call. Uh, the name may suggest that. <laughs> And the divertical, this one in particular, was actually the first thing I got hold of of telecommunications malarkey. A local telecom engineer by the name of Chris uh, dropped off one of these diverticals. In fact, I think it was this one uh, about, I don't know, 10 months ago. And it was one of the contributing factors to me falling down this pretty funky rabbit hole in the first place. However, up until this week, I had not wired a divertical in. So today we're going to have a look at them and just see what I've uh, figured out about them. I, I don't know a load about them, by the way, so this might be a waste of time if you're trying to be enlightened. But let's let's keep on looking. So to start with, the divertical has a tape player in the front. Yes, it's uh, got a tape loop in here. As you'll notice, there's no splines to the tape cassette, which is pretty funky. And of course, non-lubricated. Ooh, pop that in there. So you'll see the ones in this rack, they're 1505 and they've got like the blue font. The one up here is a 1504 and it's got the black font. And this one is an earlier version of these things. And as far as I know, uh, they did away with a few bits of wiring uh, to make this one work when they use this. So this one requires less wires plugged into it than this thing, as far as I'm aware. So in order to figure out what the fudge these things were, I had to ask a few questions on some telecommunications forums. And some kind people have let me know of some insights on these, including Jason Workman, who also runs a museum, who uh, there's links below. But this is just going to be a pretty haphazard video just about what, what I found out about these things and the plan with what I'm going to do with them. Ooh. Also, another slight interjection, I've managed to track down these things. These things are going to be very useful to wiring all of this stuff up to the internet. They're called MH88422 and they act as a sort of buffer to plug any kind of telephone exchange stuff into uh, Arduinos and stuff like this. So what these are going to do are going to convert the VoIP line that comes into the museum and out into uh, the pulse exchange stuff in here, as well as having a load of other things that we're going to program it into. But these ones have a bunch of optical isolators in there. They split off the ringing current, this, that, and the other. So there is going to be progress, and hopefully by the summer, you will be able to phone call all of this malarkey. I, I promise you, I promise you. So here's the documentation for them. I've got two different versions. Uh, Jonathan uh, on the forum as well shared me this, which was very kind of them. And um, yeah, I had this from before. Uh, call forwarding num unit number one A. And uh, this basically just goes through everything that you need to know and do to, in order to uh, use it. And it was quite a bit of a read to try and figure out what the fudge it was for. So it turns out that this has four uh, different phone lines wired into it at any one time. So from my understanding, they would have been sat in telephone exchanges and they would have been rented out by companies or users that would sometimes want their phones being diverted to other phones. For instance, a doctor's being diverted to different doctors who are on shift at that point or just a mountain of other things that somebody might require uh, their phone being diverted to another phone. I, I don't know, think of some examples, pop them below if you can think of any because my mind's gone blank. So like I said, there are four different phone lines wired into these things. There is the uh, subscriber line, that is basically the, uh, the line that goes over to the person's building or whatever. So that's the, the phone that they pick up that is for the person that gets the phone calls. So they can literally pick it up and call straight through this and pretend it wasn't even there if they want to, call it out. There's a bypass line, you ring up this line and it bypasses the whole thing as far as I understand and it goes straight over to the subscriber line. So you could call into this and it just ignores it. And then there's the IC line, as far as I am understanding from what I've been messing around with, this is the phone, this is the phone line that you call that you would usually call the number of the place. So this would be the number that is uh, subscribed to that, that, uh, that gets diverted to wherever it needs to go. So this line is when the subscriber is away or something, they can pick up any phone, call this thing and control it. And amazingly enough, it's got a speech synthesizer in it and some pretty funky robot voices. We'll have a look in a little bit. It's not as cool of a robot as you think it is, but we'll have a look anyway. So it's got a few different modes that you can set it to do. The switches to change the modes are right here. Uh, all of the switches do a number of different things on this one. Uh, there's a bunch of things 
things that aren't really useful like um, whether the phone call is being metered, you know, like being charged and stuff and all that malarkey. There's a few other switches around here, I think. Uh, where is it? That's for making it loud. That one's for making it louder and stuff. There's another one hiding somewhere. The modes, as far as we are concerned, are reasonably similar. You call it in and it diverts you to another phone number. You could call it on in the external control line and actually change it to one of 10 numbers that are saved in there. So the person that rents this can call up and change the number that it gets diverted to, if you get what I mean. And it's a really, really, really clunky way of doing it. And I haven't actually got it to work yet, but I'll show you that in a second. So this is around the back of them. It's a little bit sketchy. I've done some pretty dodgy wiring, but you know, you, yeah, you get, get with the times. Uh, so, so we'll have a look at this one on the end right here. I've done a pretty dodgy wiring job. Shh, don't, don't, don't judge me, don't judge me. So what it is, is the top two connections are the power. There's a uh, minus 50 volts and ground. And then it goes down to, ooh, ooh, wiggly, wiggly. And then it goes down to these blue and yellow wires right here. This blue and yellow wire, these two blue and yellow wires are the subscriber line. That's basically the phone that this would be diverting. Potentially not much use to us, but I've wired it in anyway. Then there's three groups of three wires for the other three phone lines. The blue-faced diverter call only actually needs two of those wires, when the black one, the older one, needed all three wires. It needed the plus, the minus, and the P wire, when the blue one only needs the plus and the minus, apparently, but I've, I've wired in the plus and the minus anyway. And if you look at these ones, I've only actually wired two wires into each of these. That's because I'm literally gonna use these for something that we'll talk about now. Ooh. So what use are these things to us? Well, in all honesty, not, not much use at all. They're, they're just useless and equated pieces of poop from the 80s. But regardless, it's cool to plug them in. This first one right here, as you saw at the back, everything's plugged into it. So when you call this one, it's gonna do what it's originally intended to do. You, you call it up and it's gonna divert you through to another phone number. The other three, well, at the end of this month, on March the 26th, there's another out of season open day. Uh, the tickets and information and stuff like that are below in the description. Then the day after, Sunday Sunday the 27th is a Patreon meetup. You can sign up and come along if you're in any tier of the Cuckoo, Heimbach or Look Mum No Computer Patreon page. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out over there. Well, whilst they're here, I'm going to ask them to uh, record some tape loops. So we're going to get some tape loops from Cuckoo and Heimbach so you can effectively call this diverter call and it will basically just play uh, Cuckoo's kind of music piece that was on here or whatever they choose to record. I haven't told them yet, but I'm hoping they like the idea. So they're basically going to act like a different type of audio player that uh, you can call up, uh, so much like the announcer 9A, as well as the answering set. So when this is all wired up to the internet, hopefully there's a live stream of this thing so you can see it doing its thing at the same time and then you can listen to it all. You get what I mean? Anyway, let's uh, call this one up and see what it does. First off, let's call this one and get diverted. Ooh, let's pick this one up. There we go. Uh, as you can see up there, we may as well hold it onto here whilst I'm calling it. Uh, uh. Whee! Here we go. Okay, so let's call it now. I'm gonna get the microphone. Oh, oh, bump it up, get it over onto this thing. Oh, oh, can you, oh, it's on the ear, not the mouth. And then one. So yeah, it's really not that interesting. All it does is you call it from one number into there and then as it says the message, it basically calls another number out again. <laughs> I'll do it again, but I'll focus on here. So it's calling right now. Um, it's uh, just seized another line. So now it's gonna divert it. See, it's diverting it automatically. And it's making a phone call to somewhere else in the museum. But like I said, it's got other lines connected to it. For instance, the control line. This control line actually has a speech synthesizer in it. All it does is read out a bunch of numbers and you need to say when to stop. The numbers correlate to pre-programmed phone numbers for you to divert. You can call, you could choose up to between 10 numbers that have been programmed into it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna call the control line and we're gonna see if we can change the number that is being pre-programmed. Three. 
stop. One. No. Stop. Stop. One. Stop. Ten. Oh, God damn it. So from what I heard, it is unreliable, but I um, still can't help but feel like I've been doing it wrong. Apparently it's supposed to say stop, but it just doesn't listen to me. So no idea about that. But what that is supposed to do is you're supposed to say stop after the designated number. Anyway, let's try and program in a number. What you have to do is use the keypad on the front. So here's an example of what you'd need to type in if you want to program the number 24316. Uh, so there is a passcode at the start and then you have to type in. So this is follow, oh, oh. To access the telephone number program mode, it is necessary to first enter a security code sequence. This is star star zero hash. So star star zero hash, that's the first bit you do, followed by a single digit which represents the location number in which a telephone number is to be stored. So that's one to 10 uh, of the 10 different numbers that you can program in. Um, IE, always one for RCF. Um, RCF, I've got to remember what the fudge that stands for. Remote Remote call forwarding, I think it is. Yeah, remote call forwarding. So remote call forwarding just means you've only got one number that it forwards to, and I think you can turn off whether it diverts or not. I can't remember. Blah, blah, blah. This is then followed by a hash if the call on the transfer line is to be metered, and a star if it is to be unmetered. We don't, it doesn't matter. I haven't wired in any of the metering things. Or star hash if no meter pulse is to be present to the unit. The number to be stored must now be entered. This can be up to 18 digits long. Numbers less than 18 digits must be terminated by hash. If it is required that the unit pauses before, during or after dialing, star can be entered. So what we do, let's uh, dial in uh, the number that I've actually had in before. So you go uh, star, star, zero, hash. And then we're gonna do uh, part, uh, number one, which is the first number of them all, uh, hash. And then I'm going to do a couple of pauses. Pause, pause, six, nine, zero, um, six. Pause, pause, screw it, why not? Let's make it a little bit longer. And then hash to stop it. Now it's programmed. And apparently I can read back the number on here. The first store number will be sequentially, so I can read it back by going, okay, uh, star, star, one, hash, one. Six, no. Uh, uh, a, A, six, nine, zero, six, boom, A, A, A is like a pause. So I'll just quickly call it and you'll see the screen uh, do its thing uh, whilst, whilst we're uh, talking, to the, uh, talking to the lady that's on the tape. So I'm just gonna hold it there. All right, let's call it. Nine, one, one. And then it's phoning, you can hear it in the background. So that is pretty much as much as I have to say about the diverter call. I'm just glad it's plugged in. With these ones, the plan is to play the tape loop, so it wouldn't really have much of a number in there. So in order to program the number for this one, I'd make sure it's 18 numbers long, just to make it as long as possible. So I'll go star, star, zero, hash, number one, hash, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and it should just end. So now it's gonna be uh, just going through pause all the time and just keep on playing the tape loop. So that would just mean that this acts like a, yeah, just a random tape player that you can call up from the internet. And the other cool thing is they're just, they are removable. There's a little bit of a retaining strip on the top. Then you remove them so you can adjust it and make all the changes. On the inside, apparently, from what I've heard from uh, Jonathan on the forum, is there was an EEPROM version of this. So it replaced the tape player with an EEPROM, which is quite interesting. But um, yeah, so some of them have tapes, some of them have EEPROMs. Uh, this one is the 1505, so it's slightly different, but there's a lot of stuff going on in these things. It's just it's pretty cool, and they just slide into these cases. This case, oh yeah, it's giving it a slam. So yeah, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, pretty, not pretty cool. It's just, it's just, it's just what it is, you know, it's what it is. So yes, finally, diverter calls are plugged in. The next step is internet with this one, and then above, you'll see these random uh, bulb fixtures. These are the 
starts of the drawing machine. But yeah, just a bit more information that you probably didn't need to know, most likely didn't need to know, but now, now you sort of know it. If you know more about the diverter calls and stuff, please uh, mention below and comment below. If uh, somebody really knows, I'll make sure to pin that comment if they have experience of these when they were working with them. Um, yeah. And like I said, the out of season open day is on March the 26th and there's also a Patreon meet and greet for Cuckoo and Heimbach on March the 27th. The information is below. Anyway, have a lovely time.